So I have been driving straight up a 20% incline for the last half hour. I finally got to what I think is the top. I actually have no idea if this is the top or not, but there's a viewpoint here. And you know what? For the view, it was worth it. Look at that. Absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> you can't see anything. I like I'm wearing glasses and driving it's it's misty slightly cuz we're in a cloud and I can't see more than like 30 feet in front of me. It's so cloudy and misty and foggy here. I can't see more than 30 feet in front of me. Um my brakes are shit. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, this is an intense day. Um, it's not cold, luckily, but it's very wet. Uh, I still don't want to put on rain gear because it's buried in my pack um, and I'm lazy. So I think I'm just going to keep riding because I only have another hour and a half left. But yes, this is, this is pea soup. This is some of the thickest fog I have seen uh, maybe ever. Um, definitely more thick than in Hajong. It's just, it's crazy. See, you can barely even see that fucking truck. And watch, watch how fast it just disappears. Right? You can still see it, still see it. And it's gone. <laughs> it didn't turn a corner, by the way. It's still right there. It's just, you can't see it. It's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I made it to the tiny village. I found the Naha Nagi. It's pretty nice. Costs $10 a night. Let me show you. See, it's a really big one. The bed is not comfortable, but it's not horrible either. I slept on it fine. Uh, flat screen TV, desk. There's some problems, you know, like there's holes in the wall and like the um, windows. Wind just goes straight through the windows. And I think there's a frog up there, but overall, really nice place for 10 bucks. I went to Taswa pretty early on in my trip. It was in February and I was on a really shitty bike, the DTEC Win. It couldn't really do anything. It had a very slow max speed. Its brakes were bad. Its engine was bad. It was always breaking down. It was a terrible bike. And as a result, Taswa completely beat me. I got up early in the morning one day to try to ride up the mountain and the roads were so bad and it was so foggy that I just had to turn around. I couldn't do it. I gave up. Fast forward a month later, suddenly I have a much better bike, a much more expensive one that is specifically made for off-roading. It's basically a big dirt bike. And I decided, here's my chance to do Taswa a second time. And I'm really glad I did, but the roads were absolutely horrendous. And although I didn't have to turn around, it was not an easy thing to do. I was riding from Vunling and I got to Taswa around like four o'clock in the afternoon. And by that point, the sun was slowly starting to go down. And as I started my way up the mountain, uh, the weather started to close in and the weather on Taswa is infamous for how thick the fog is and how low the clouds hang. And so the ride up was extremely wet and extremely foggy. I couldn't see anything. And by the time I get to the top, I don't really know where I'm going. And the phone that I had at the time was not waterproof and it wasn't in a waterproof case either and enough water got in that the phone shut off. And so right when I needed to know exactly where I was going to get to the homestay, my phone wasn't working. I managed to find the homestay just through sheer luck. I passed it without realizing it, and then I went back and I saw a sign, and I called the number that was on the sign, and somebody came and brought me to the homestay and unlocked it. And I was the only person staying there, I was probably the only person that had stayed there in a long time because it did not look like a very active homestay. But 
It was a bed for the night, and that's all I needed it to be. And they even fed me dinner. Actually, there was a chicken that I was worried was going to be crowing all night, but luckily, that chicken turned out to be dinner. So, I was pretty stoked about that. And then the next morning, I left bright and early to go find the dragons back. So this is the homestay where I spent a somewhat cold and somewhat awkward night, just because nobody speaks any English, I obviously don't speak any Vietnamese, and the family, they were nice, but they weren't overly friendly. Um, they didn't eat dinner with me, they didn't drink with me or anything like that. They were nice, but they weren't like amazing, you know. Uh, the homestay itself is pretty rustic drafty, pretty cold. The beds were soft though, and the blankets were extremely nice and heavy and warm, which was awesome. Um, but now I go, now, oops, now I go to try to get to the top of the mountain. Maybe I'll see some clouds, maybe I won't. Either way, this has been one hell of an experience. Yesterday I drove through an hour of some of the worst roads in complete fog. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see more than 10 feet in front of me. It was terrifying. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen today. I've been looking for the dragons back for about 10 minutes now, driving up and down the same stretch of road. I've asked, um, I've asked three people for directions. I have gotten three different answers. Um, I really have no fucking idea. And also, I don't really know what I'm looking for. There's no signs. Um, I think, I think maybe that might be the dragon's back right there. Because it's a long ridge line that kind of looks like a dragon's back. But I don't fucking know. And I don't think locals really know either. I finally found the dragon's back. Didn't take me that long. It took me about half an hour to find it. It has no signs. It does have a little... Um, like convenience shop up there but it's beautiful I, f I can't believe I found it there's a little dirt track going down if I was a more skilled motorcycle rider I would drive my motorcycle down here because um, that thing is totally capable of doing this but a I'm lazy and B I'm just not that good at riding it and so I could do it but it would be very tiring for me and I just don't feel like doing it and I like hiking so screw you I'm gonna do what I want And the view already is very nice. I haven't even gone anywhere. And this is the track. It's going to be awesome. This Dragon's Back ridge line is fucking amazing. It, it just goes straight into a valley. It's a series of like a few mountains, maybe like three mountains um, on a ridge that go straight into a valley. And there's just incredible views on both sides. Beautiful view number one, incredible. And beautiful view number two, incredible. This is an awesome little hike. I'm so happy I found it. Um, I drove past it and I looked at it and I was like, hey, that looks like a dragon's back. But it wasn't where the locals had told me it was, so I didn't believe it. So I was like, no, I'm gonna keep going. Asked some other locals, they told me to turn around, and I was like, all right. So I turned around, asked another local, and he pointed right at the same spot that I thought was the dragon's back. So I'm happy I found it. I should trust my instincts over what people tell me, because with Vietnamese people, you ask four different people, you have four different answers. Um, but I'm just happy I found it, because it is awesome. It's so beautiful. Remember what I said earlier about don't do this unless you're on a good motorbike? Well, this dude, he's on a good motorbike. He's on a Honda Blade, but definitely not an off-road bike. And he is doing it because local Vietnamese people are badasses. More on my Locals Are Badass series. There's two Vietnamese dudes off-road on an automatic motorcycle. Oh, did he just stall it? But they're just going up off-road on an automatic. 
badasses. It's glorious up here. And even the sun is out. I can't get over it. This view is unbelievable. This hike was nice and short because I drove to almost the top of it. If you wanted to, there is a path that goes all the way down there. You can't really see it on the video, but it winds and twists and goes all the way down to that river down there. Um, I think that there's also a path that goes up and over that mountain and back down to the other side. Uh, there's tons and tons and tons of little dirt paths that would make perfect hiking trails. So this huge cloud just showed up and it's obscuring the view, but this is kind of what we were looking for. So I'm going to go up to the higher section and see if I can see over this cloud. More in my series of locals are badasses. Look at how steep that is. How is he going to make it? Slowly. <laughs> See, I would be too scared to do that. Yeah, you need to travel in uh, the north of Vietnam for um, maybe a few months and you can have some experience. True, true, true. Like. Overall, Taswa was one of the most difficult places that I went to in the entire trip just because of the roads and the fog and the weather and how rural it is and how you're in the middle of absolute nowhere and there's no hotels, there's no signs, there's no... even Google Maps is wrong half the time. So it was really hard, but it was awesome, and I look back on it very fondly.